All right, welcome to part two of the grappling tutorial. So in the last one, you should have it working so that you can see these two targets in your scene as you walk around. So like I was saying, the next thing we need to do is make it so that it only chooses one of these guys. So the first thing we need to do is add this grappling component to our character. So select the character, whichever one you're using, and open up his blueprint. And then up here at the top left, we want to add component. We want to add our grapple component that we created. So it should show up over here. And then now that it's added, this component should now start firing these events. So we come back to the event graph. Let's see where we left off. So we have our event tick. It switches on the grappling state. And by default, I didn't mention this last time, but by default, the grapple state is set to retracted, which is correct, obviously. So it's going to come up here, and then it's going to go into tick retracted. And then it's going to come into here, and it's going to get the overlapped actors. And so now we want to call our um, find best target function, and we will hook that up to this guy, like so. And then inside of here, we are doing, let's see, we're looping over each one, we're setting our current target, and then we're doing a line trace, and then we're rendering that. So yeah, we can see exactly what this looks like So if we run it now. So you can see, oh, why is it only, Finding one. Did I mess up my for each loop? Oh, yeah. So we don't want to hook up this return because it's returning out of the for loop. We just want to leave that unhooked, so unhook that. So if we run this now, you can see it's drawing lines to all of the um, targets in the game. Maybe we should turn this down to like half a second or something. <laughs> so it's not just so spammy. So yeah, so you can see it's drawing a line to all of the targets in our world. If it's not doing that, make sure you go back and watch part one so that you can figure out uh, where you might have gone wrong. But that's what it should be looking like right now. So let's finish writing this function. So now that we have um, a line trace to our target, we want to check if we have, if like the line trace actually hit anything before it reached the target. So to do that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we can drag off this return value and do a branch. And this is just telling us if it hit anything at all. And so if it hits something, then we want to do a drag off of the out hit. And we want to split this, or maybe it's called break. And we want to break this and then hit this drop down. And this will give us access to the actor that it hit. And so we can say that if the actor that it hit is the target, then we can safely assume that it didn't hit anything before it hit the target. Because obviously the first thing it hit was the target. So we can drag off this hit actor and we can say equals. And if it equals our local current target, we want to do a branch. So if it if it didn't hit anything is what this is checking, then we want to do the logic to determine if this target is our best target or not. So to do that, um, we basically are going to judge it, judge whether or not it's our best target based on the angle between where the camera is looking and what, or like the angle between where the camera is looking and the angle to and the vector to the uh, target itself. So we need to calculate that angle. So to do that, we're going to drag in our current targets, and we want to get the location. So we'll say get actor location. And we want to subtract that from the character's location. So we'll say vector subtract, vector subtract. And then we'll drag in our owning character. And we'll say get actor location and hook that up. So that's going to give us a vector from the character to the target. And then we want to normalize that. So it's a unit vector with length of one. So normalize it. And then we want to take the dot product of this and the camera, the character's camera. So we'll drag off of the owning character and say get uh, follow camera, I think is what they call it. Yep, so get the camera. And then we will get the forward vector of that. So get, get forward vector. And like I said, we wanna take the dot product. And then we take the a cosine of the dot product and that will give us the angle between the two vectors. So a cosine and make sure you get Make sure you get a cosine and not cosine, and make sure you get a cosine in degrees. Those are both very important. So you want this one, a cosine in degrees. 
and then we will make another local variable and call this our current angle. So right click on this and say promote to local variable. Again, make sure you do local variable so it shows up down here. And we'll call this our current angle. And then in parentheses, we'll put local since it's a local variable. And we'll hook that up to our true. Um, actually, we're going to put this in a sequence real quick. So let's just drag this up here. And then let's go over here and add a sequence. You can create one by holding down S and left clicking. You can also create one by right clicking and searching for a sequence. It's the same thing. But we want to create a sequence because the first thing we want to do is figure out the angle between, or the angle to this target basically. So that's what we're doing first. So let's just make a little comment here because it's kind of like a two-parter. So this is step one. So step one is calculate the angle to the target. And then step two is comparing that angle to our current best angle. So now that we have our current angle set, we can come over here. And after this, we want to compare it. So essentially, we want to say if this angle to this to our current to this current target is smaller than our current best angle, or we don't have a current target yet, then we want to go ahead and update our target to the to the to this new one. So that's going to basically look like this. We want to say if our current angle is less than our best angle. Now we don't have a variable yet for storing the best angle, so we need to create one. And that's just going to be a local variable because it doesn't need to exist outside of that function or this function. So we'll create another variable and we'll call it our best angle. And again, our best angle is just whatever, whichever one is the smallest. And so we'll make this a float. And we also are going to need a best target as well. So we can just right click and duplicate this guy and call it best target local. So you can see we kind of have a pattern here. We have the current target and the current angle and the best angle and the best target. And so we want to say if the current angle is less than our best angle, or, so or boolean, or we don't have a target yet. So or our best target is valid. And then we want to say not. So if it's not valid, so if our current angle is less than our best angle, or we don't have a best angle yet, then we want to update. So we'll add a branch, hook that up. And you can create branches by holding down B and left clicking. That's how I did that, by the way. So if we want to update, then we'll say our best target set our best target to our current target and set our best angle to our current angle like so so that's basically step two so we'll just add a little comment around this so step two is if the angle is less than our current angle make this our new target. Okay. So again, just to recap, because I know that was kind of a lot, we'll just go through it again, and you can kind of double check that you've done things correctly. So we're looping over all of, oh, actually, we forgot to do one thing. Let's take this return node that we just kind of left hanging there, and hook that up to the complete, and we want to return our best target at the end of the function. Okay. So just to recap, find best target gets called with all of the targets that are around our player. We start looping over them. Um, we cache the current one. And then we do a line trace to see if we can actually see the current target. And if we can, which is what this is checking, if the line trace hits it, basically, then we do two things. We first calculate the angle, um, the angle to this current target, which is what this is. So it's probably gonna be something like, you know, 20, 30 degrees, somewhere in that area. And then we compare that angle to whatever our best angle is. So you can think about it, you know, if a target is at a 90 degree angle from where the player is looking, and then you go to the next target and it's only 20 degrees from where the player is looking, then this is going to evaluate to true because it's going to say, oh, this, you know, this target is much more in the direction of where we're looking. So let's go ahead and use this as our target instead. And so if that's the case, then it updates our best target to our current target and our best angle to our current angle, like so. And then it just returns that, which is what happens here inside of the completed. So it returns that value. So if we go back to that function we were in, which I think is tick retracted, 
Uh, yes, it is. So we get the overlapped actors, then we call that function. And so this is going to return to us um, a target. So we want to make sure that this target is valid. Well, actually, I guess we don't really need to, because if it's not valid, it's fine as well. So we can cast to a grapple target, because we know that it is going to be a grapple target, because that's what we're searching for right here. And then we want to tell the grapple target to basically show the circle. So to do that, we're going to make a little handy little function over here on the left. So add a new function and drag it into the private category, set it to private, and then change the name of it to set current target. So this is going to be a pretty simple function. Basically, it's really its responsibility is going to be to update our current target and then make sure that the the widget on the target is shown for whichever one is current and make sure all the other ones are hidden. So we obviously need this to take in a target. So hit the plus button on the input and change this to a BP uh, grapple target object reference. And we'll call this the new target. Now we're gonna need to save this value. So right click and say promote to variable and call this the current target. And then we can drag this into our private category as well and set it to private since nobody else needs access to it. Um, but before we just straight out and set it like this, um, we want to do a couple things. So actually go ahead and unhook this. And the first thing we want to do is we want to check that the new target that's being passed in is not already equal to whatever our current target is. Because if it is, then we don't need to do anything because it's already our current target. So let's drag in our current target. And then we can drag off this and say not equals that up and then we can make another branch and so this way this function is only going to do anything if the target being passed in is not already the one we have set and then we want to add a sequence because we're going to do three things so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hide um, whatever our current target is before the, the new one gets set and we're doing that because obviously if we're looking at one target and we go and we switch and we start looking at a different one, we want the one that we were looking at before to be hidden so that circle doesn't show anymore. And then we want the new circle to show. So we need to hide the old one and then we need to update our current target and then we need to show the new one. So in order to hide and show these things, we actually need to add a quick little function inside of our um, BP target. So let's just leave this here. We can delete this real quick. We'll just leave this like this for right now, and then let's go into our grapple target. So BP grapple target, and go to um, the left. Wait, let me check my. Yeah, so go to the left and add a function and call it set active. So when it's active, it's going to be visible, like rendering, and when it's not active, it's going to be hidden. So we just want to take this or have this taken a boolean value for whether or not it's active or not. And then real simply, we're just going to drag in our widget, which is the thing that renders the circle. And we'll say set visibility to whatever value is passed in. So when they set it to active, the widget will be visible. And when they set it to not active, it will not be visible. OK, so now we can come back here to where we were. And again, I said we're going to have three things. So let's hit this little pin once. Um, let me go back to my code. So the first thing we want to do is we want to drag in our current target, which again is our old target in this in this case. And then we want to check if this is valid, because if it is, we want to hide it. So you can actually right click on this and say convert to validated git. And what that will do is we'll just kind of change it so that it gives you a valid and a not valid pin as well. And so we want to say if it's valid, then we want to set it to not be active. So we'll say set active and just leave this as false. And then the next thing we want to do is update our current target to our new one. So we'll drag in our current target and say set. And we want to set it to this new target that gets passed in. So we can just right click and say get new target. And that'll get us that variable. And so that is step two. And then step three is making this new current target valid. So again, we want to only do it if the new one is valid. So we'll copy this. So this is really our new one now since we just set it. So if our new one's valid, then we want to do set active again, so we'll copy and paste that, except this time we want to press pass in um, true for active. 
So again, pretty straightforward. We're just hiding the old one, and then we're setting our new target, and then we're updating the new one to be visible. Okay, so now we have this handy little function which can easily change our current target. So now we can come back to our, where were we? Tick retracted, I believe. And then we want to call our set current target, and we want to set it to whichever one this find best target returns, just like so. So now if we run this, hopefully we should see it working. So just to recap, we have these two, maybe we'll add a third one just so we can really see it doing stuff. Add a third one here, okay. So clearly it's not working because it's rendering all of them. So what did I do wrong? All right, so we need to set these guys to be uh, not visible by default. So if we select this guy or go to the uh, grapple target and then we select the widget over here on the left and search for visibility, we want it to be not visible by default and then we can compile and save. And then also let's turn off the line trace since we know that's working. So go back to the grapple components, go to um, find best targets, and then I'm just gonna change this to none. So now if we run this, you can see it draws whatever one we're looking at. Uh, it doesn't seem to wanna draw that right one. It's probably because it's I just kind of threw it in badly. So it needs to the line trace needs to be valid to it. So you want to make sure that you don't have these things like in the middle of something because you need to be able to actually see it and you can't actually see that one. So make sure you have it on the edge. And so there we go. So now you can see as I walk around or as I look even, it updates to be whichever one I'm looking at, whichever one is the best candidate essentially. And it doesn't matter where I am, it just, you know, it just kind of figures it out for me. And you can update that algorithm if you think you want to add some other logic to it like maybe do something by distance, but for the sake of this tutorial, I think that's pretty good. All right, so make sure that that's working. Um, obviously, if you if it isn't working, then you might have messed something up, so just go back and watch like part two again, or maybe even part one as well, to make sure you have it working, but uh, it's really important that obviously it's working uh, the same way it's working in my video at this point. Okay, so, so we have it so that it's finding the best um, target for you to look at, or for you to grapple to. The next thing we need to do is make it so that we can actually grapple to them. So maybe we'll go ahead and just do that in part three. I don't know how long this video is, but um, we'll just do that in part three. So I'll see you guys in the next part.